Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for our service this morning, we have a very special service of Thanksgiving. It's a, a, um, a, a series of psalms that we'll be using for our worship, um, for contemplation as well as spoken responses as well. There we go. Um, so make sure I move to my next slide. Um, and so for our, our, our focus today is going to be on um, that all times we give thanks. When the times are good, we give thanks. When the times are not so good, we give thanks. But most of all, we're thankful for the gifts that God has given to us, the gifts of forgiveness of sins and um, um, the knowledge that our Savior has rescued us from all, all of our failures and mistakes. So today, we give thanks. We will begin by, uh, we will begin, Pastor Frick, can you do me a favor? I need something to just start the next slide. I can run it from here, but you can just cue, put it to the next slide. Thank you. We're going to wait for a couple seconds for Pastor Frick, who is awesome, to begin the slides, slides for us. Is everyone's Thanksgiving going so far, good so far today? We're in worship together, right? That's a great thing, so that's a great beginning. You just want to click the first one. I can run it from here so you can see with your family. Thank you. That's good. We'll begin now. Uh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights above. Praise, Praise Him, Him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at His command they were created, and He established them forever and ever. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do His bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for His name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Praise the Lord. God invites us and inv brings us together to worship Him. Let us confess our sins and ask God to forgive us. Heavenly Father, You never cease to give me Your abundant love, and yet I confess that I am sinful. Though I have known what You wanted me to do, I have turned away and done evil instead. You have blessed me, but so often I have failed to show You thanks. I know that I deserve punishment both now and in eternity, but I am sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our heavenly and loving Father, has forgiven us all our sins. He has shown His amazing love by giving His only Son to be the sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God has blessed us abundantly. Let us pray and give Him thanks. Lord, You have given us everything that we need. As we look at all of the amazing gifts You have placed in our lives, Nothing compares to the miracle of faith worked in our hearts. You took us who were spiritually dead and given, have given us eternal life. Through Your Word and sacraments, You continue to strengthen us and keep us as Yours until You call us to our eternal home. We give You thanks and praise for Your loving care and ask that You keep us in Your tender care. 
Amen. We'll begin by singing our, our first hymn for, this, for today. We'll sing together, From All That Dwell Below the Skies. Our, our uh, sermonettes come to us from Psalm 100. Here we're told that we are to praise our Lord at all times and to give thanks to Him in everything. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us and we are His. We are His people the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is the Word of the Lord. When you receive that perfect gift, the gift that shows the person who gave it to you knows you very well and cares about you, what do you say to them? Thank you. We, there you go, you got it. Thank you. That's right. We're going to come back to that a couple times to so be prepared. We say thank you. Because we know that this individual thought about us, thought about our needs, our likes, they cared. And so we say, thank you. you. Now, it doesn't have to be the most expensive gift in the world. In fact, most of my most treasured gifts I've ever received are worth nothing or very little. But I love them because of who gave them to me. What it meant for them to give it to me. The fact that they cared about me. And so I said, Thank you. You guys are are on ball. Nice. If your child gives you a picture that they drew, you say to them, it might be the 17th picture of the day they drew for you, but you still say, that was the last time I promised, last time. Yes, we say thank you, because we know that they cared enough to make this drawing for us. And it doesn't matter if it's a lifelike picture with every every whisker in place and the shading just perfect of a cat. We don't care if it's perfect or if it's hard to tell if it's a house or a dog. We don't care. Because our child 
made it with us in mind. They wanted us to have it, whether it's the first or the 17th picture, they made it for us, and so we say thank you. We say thanks to people who do kind things for us, who give us things, who speak to us with kind words. We say thank you because we recognize that they care about us. But in the middle of all of this thanksgiving, sometimes we have a hard time remembering to give thanks to the one who deserves all praise and all thanks and all glory and all honor. Sometimes we forget to give him thanks. The one who loved us perfectly. The one who made the heavens above and the earth below. The one who knitted you and formed you perfectly like he wanted to. The one who shows his power, his majesty in creation. This world of beauty that even unbelievers look out and say, this is astounding. The God who shows his power through his word, a power that changes hearts, opens eyes to see that he is our God who has rescued us and saved us. This is who our God is, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the ever amazing, all-powerful Creator, but also the ever-attentive, listening God who listens to your prayers, to your needs, to your thanks. Let us remember His power. Let's remember His gifts. Let's remember His glory when we get together today and worship to praise His name, to give Him thanks. Let's remember Him as we sit together and pray to Him of love and thanks for what He has provided for us so abundantly. Let's remember Him when we wake up in the morning, when we, when we go to bed at night, throughout the day, every day. Remember who your God is and that He deserves all thanks and honor and glory. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let's give Him thanks. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Our second lesson comes to us from Psalm 92. Uh, we read from uh, various, various verses. Um, here we are reminded that our God has been good to us, has given us amazing gifts. We're called to give Him thanks for all of the, the great times we have and the blessings He's provided. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to Your name, O Most High, proclaiming Your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, to the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord! How profound your thoughts! The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, The Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no wickedness in Him. You know how on, uh, on TV shows or, or movies when there's a Thanksgiving scene, everyone's gathered around the table? They, they always take a moment and have every person around the table say one thing that they're thankful for. Yeah, growing up, my family never did that. Um, it just wasn't part of our custom. I think it's a, it's a nice custom. It's, it's, it's nice. It's a great reminder that we want to share with our family one thing we're very thankful for. But I see one major problem. I don't think I could stop with just one thing. I don't think you could either. How could I possibly list off just one thing that I'm thankful for? How could you? Look at your life. Just 
Take a moment and think of all the blessings God has given to you in your life. All the mercies. All the gifts. All the people. I am thankful. I am thankful for my family. An amazing Christian woman who builds me up and encourages me. Four godly children who love their Lord and want to serve Him. I am thankful. I am thankful for the house that God has given to us, the food on our table. I'm thankful. I am thankful for Pastor Turf's recovery. He who was very, very ill, and yet now he's recovering at home. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the doctors and nurses, all the medical staff who assisted him, all the medicines, all the technology that God has given to us through through wisdom and intellect. I'm thankful. I am thankful for you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. You who truly are my brothers and sisters, because we encourage one another. We build each other up, and, and sure, Do all of us get along at all times? Certainly not, because we're brothers and sisters in a sinful world. And yet we love one another. We care about each other. I'm thankful. Thankful for all of you. I am thankful for my friends, many of whom whom are not believers. I'm thankful that God uses me to bring the gospel to them. I'm thankful for all of your friends both Christian and non-Christian, and that God uses you to encourage the the believers and to warn the unbelievers. I'm thankful for those opportunities. I'm thankful for this country that we live in. I'm thankful for our government. I'm thankful for, well, we could keep on going, but that would take all day. Maybe we should stop right now. Or, Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we shouldn't stop giving thanks. Because God is always good. He continually blesses us and gives us good gifts. We shouldn't stop giving thanks because our God is always with us. We should give thanks to Him at all times. And every blessing, to stop a moment to give God a prayer of thanks. We want to remember that our God is good. He knows you better than anyone else. He knows what you need. And He will always give you good gifts. Let us thank our Lord. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. Amen. We'll continue now by singing our next hymn together. We'll sing, Now Thank We All Our God.
Our next psalm for contemplation comes to us from Psalm 34. Here we are reminded that we are to give thanks to God in the difficult times, the hard times, the struggles and hardships of this world. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to Him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear Him, and He delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in Him. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones, not One of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue His servants. No one who takes refuge in Him will be condemned. It's the word of our Lord. Have you seen uh, the pictures of the the tree being unloaded for the Rockefeller Center of this year? A big Christmas tree? Anyone see pictures of it? Ugly. Bad. Um, in fact, a lot of people took pictures of it and they uploaded it to social media and it, and it right away became a metaphor for 2020. Because the tree is supposed to be so beautiful and wonderful, it's, it's just it's gaunt, it's missing a bunch of branches, it looks ugly. They kept jumping on top of it saying, this is perfect end to our year. Uh, some people called it the Charlie Brown tree because you, you know the Charlie Brown tree, right? The little spindly little thing that looks so ugly, but they... They, they, they loved it anyways. Truth is, if you look back at past years, every tree when it gets to the Rockefeller Center looks ugly. I mean, it's got chopped down and thrown in the back of a truck and drove a long ways. It's just getting unloaded. Of course it looks terrible. But, with giving some love and care and some decorations, it looks quite nice. This year, I'm sure, it will be no different. But of course, this year is the year that everyone jumps on and how ugly it is and how terrible it is because it's hard to find anything to be happy for this year. Everything is going bad. If you listen to the media, there's no good news to report, just bad and worse. Which do you prefer, bad or worse? COVID numbers are on the rise. People are concerned about the economy. Small businesses are worried about how they're going to stay open. Those businesses that still are open because so many small businesses have struggled and have had to close their doors. Even family businesses that have been open for 25, 30 years, unable to survive. That's people without jobs, without income. There is very little, seemingly, to be thankful for this year. This year is just one, one mistake after another. Well, that's the way the world wants us to feel. But then there's also our own personal struggles, our own personal hardships, our own difficulties. Not being able to see uh, family and friends like we've wanted to, and now we're told we shouldn't go visit anyone at Thanksgiving or over Christmas. Hardships, difficulties... I mean, where is God? Is God still God? Where is His power? Where is His goodness and mercy? What do I have to be thankful for? Is God still in charge? Yes. Of course He is. God is always with us. Even through the news of gloom and doom, God is with us. And we have every reason to be thankful and to praise His name. Because we aren't alone. 
through our difficulties, our problems, through the world's fears. God is with us. He promises that He watches over all believers. He cares for your needs. And He will use everything, everything, for your good and His glory. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in Him. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Don't be afraid of 2020. Don't be afraid of all the bad news. Don't be afraid of the threats the world makes. Don't be afraid of the the personal struggles you have because you don't face them alone. Your God is with you. The God of power the God of might, the one who promises you that he will deliver you from all problems and all troubles. He doesn't promise you won't have any troubles, but that he will deliver you from them. Don't be afraid. Don't question. Don't worry. Remember the one in whom you take refuge in. He is God of all, and he is in charge. Amen. At this time, please stand. We've been called together this morning to praise and thank our God, but also to grow in faith and knowledge of Him. Also to encourage one another. And so doing, let us speak these words together, our profession of faith of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Our final psalm for our contemplation today comes to us from Psalm 103. Here we are reminded that we have so much to be thankful for. The people in our lives, the gifts we've been blessed with, the great times, even the difficult times. But above all, we have one thing to be thankful for, to always praise and honor our God for forgiveness of our sins. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul. And forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known His ways to Moses, His deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Praise the Lord, my soul. He will not always accuse, nor will He harbor His anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His love for those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear Him, and His righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep His covenant and remember to obey His precepts. 
Praise the Lord. All His works everywhere in His dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. As we gather to, together today for worship, when we gather with our family and our friends, when we bow down to worship our God on our own, when we give Him thanks and praise, let's not forget about the greatest, most amazing gift God has ever given to us, the forgiveness of our sins. Those sins once accused us Satan once used those to hold us captive, to show us our failures and our worthlessness, to show us that we don't deserve a moment of God's time. The eternity with God is off the, was off the, uh, off the case because we didn't, didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it because we're sinners. But those sins have been washed away. Wiped away by our God completely, absolutely. The one who demands perfection gave us his perfection. The one who said that there is a punishment to be made for all sins took that punishment upon himself. Our almighty, all-powerful creator came down and took his place between murderers and thieves on the cross. Our Lord did that to pay for our sins. To tell us that He has paid the full price for our mistakes and failures. He did this for me. He died on the cross for you. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives us all our sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. He doesn't treat us as our sins deserve because our sins are gone. Taken away by Him. Paid for completely. Satan can no longer say that you are unworthy because God has made you worthy. Your sinful nature can no, no longer tell you the lies that God doesn't love you because of your mistakes. God proved that He loves you and took away those mistakes, those failures. God has declared you innocent and free from your sins. Thanks be to God, your guilt is gone and God has rescued you. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His love for those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we give thanks. We give thanks for our friends. We give thanks for the blessings in our lives. We give thanks for our homes, our food. We give thanks for everything that God has provided, but most of all, above all things, We give Him thanks for the knowledge that our sins are gone, that He has opened heaven for us, that we are His children. Let us give Him thanks. Praise the Lord. All His works everywhere. In His dominion, praise the Lord my soul. Let us give Him thanks today and tomorrow and every day because He alone is worthy of all praise and all honor and all thanks. Amen. At this time, we will have our uh, offering brought forward. And during the offering, the congregation will sing our next hymn, We Praise You, O God, Our Redeemer.
Please stand for prayer. Lord, you have provided us both physically and spiritually. We thank you for the food, clothing, and shelter that you have so generously given. We thank you for the country in which we live and the government that you have wisely placed over us. We thank you for our health. We thank you for the blessings you provide even in sickness and weakness. But most of all, we give you thanks for your sacrifice which paid for all of our sins and for the faith that you have worked in our hearts. Amen. For the prayer of the church, we have one special prayer request. Uh, Pastor Turif um, uh, messaged me the other day, and he wanted to personally thank all of you for the prayers that you have been, uh, you have been uh, praying on his behalf. He's very thankful. Um, and also, we're going to have a prayer of thanks for his recovery as well. Lord of the harvest, we give you thanks. For all of your mercies, your compassion, and the gifts that you have constantly given to your people, we give you thanks. Open our eyes to your acts of love so that we focus on your goodness rather than the evil of this world. Draw us to your word so that we hear of your compassion and mercy. We also ask, Lord, that you be with all those who are traveling for Thanksgiving this year. Watch over them. Give joy to families and bring healing to the hurting. For all those who are far away from family and friends, remind them that they are not alone, but that they are always with you. We also thank you, Lord, for answering the prayers of so many at the recovered health of Pastor Turif. While he still has a long way to go, we give you thanks for restoring him to us and allowing him to leave the hospital and return home so quickly. Continue to be with him as he, as he recovers his strength. You, Lord, truly are good to your people and deserve all praise and thanks. We also pray together the words our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Responsibly, we see, we see the words from Psalm 111. Hallelujah! I will praise the Lord with all my heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The Lord's works are great, studied by all who delight in them. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He has provided food for those who fear Him. He remembers His covenant forever. He has shown His people the power of His works by giving them inheritance of the, the inheritance of the nations. The works of His hands are truth and justice. All His instructions are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in love and in uprightness. He has sent redemption to His people. He has ordained His covenant forever. His name is holy, is holy and awe-inspiring. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow His instructions have good insight. His praise endures forever. Lord, You have given us every reason to give You thanks. Move us to live out our lives of thanks in ways that glorify You and lead us in safe places. Use us to proclaim your mercy to the world so that many more may praise you and give you thanks now and in eternity. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, receive the, the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. We'll sing together our, our final hymn for, for this morning, How Great Thou Art.
Good morning again, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, I do have a couple of announcements.